arms. I have arms. You might have arms. I'm really sorry if you do not. And now Smash Bros. is getting arms of its own. But does this give the fighter pass any legs? So, the first fighter for this second fighter pass has been announced, and to everyone's surprise, it was a fighter from Nintendo's other Switch fighting game, ARMS. This kind of came as a huge surprise to everyone, as the series already had spirits, me costumes, and even an assist trophy. Many had written off its chances of getting a fighter, yet lo and behold, Nintendo and Sakurai hit us with a curveball once again. So now the question is, who in ARMS will be raising their arms in combat? The poster boy for the series is Springman, but he's already an assist trophy. Although, to be fair, there is no rule against an upgrade like that, and they could simply make it so if Springman is playable, his assist trophy doesn't appear. Alternatively, they could replace it with Springman's robot counterpart, Springtron. There are options to get around this. A popular theory right now is that they didn't reveal the character because it's actually a hero situation, with Springman, Ribbon Girl, Ninjara, and Min Min all as ults of one another. They are the four fighters who have a similar frame and could be mapped over one another with ease. Another theory is Springman, but with a Ribbon Girl Echo Fighter and both will come together as Fighter 6. Both of these are possible and I quite like them as they give us more characters, but I'm not convinced. After thinking about it more, it would seem unusual to give one part of the fighters pass more content than the rest instead of valuing them all evenly. And with a hero situation, well those four are all basically the same, whereas the four arms characters have unique traits that would be weird suddenly shared amongst each other or to not have at all. It'd be like saying, why doesn't Ryu have Akuma, Sakura and Dan as ults, because they all basically fight the same. It ignores what makes them unique fighters. Instead, based on Sakurai's comments, it looks like the draw of this fighter will be the unique mechanic it brings how it utilises the spirit of arms. And if I had to guess, the reason they didn't reveal it to be Springman is because it's not him. He was too obvious and they want us to guess. So after looking over the roster in depth, I really want to say it's Dr. Coil, but it's probably Min Min. She is the most popular character, she has what makes arms unique, the um, arms, and she isn't huge like some of the other characters. She's also the only character to kick, which gives her a bit more to work with for standard attacks than others. But really, this moveset I'm about to outline could work for most of the cast. You would just have to change a few things around. And that's because most of the specials are pretty much what you'd expect. The standard special is a command grab. Min Min throws both arms forwards and grabs opponents. If she is standing, the opponent is brought to her, but if it's done in the air, she is taken to them. Her grab is then followed up by a kicking attack. For those wondering, her regular grab is similar but doesn't go as far and doesn't pull her towards opponents. Then for the up special, I did take something from Springman for this but it's not his gimmick, it was something used in one of his victory poses. He actually uses his arms as springs to launch himself into the sky. I don't see why Min Min couldn't also do that to be honest. Then her down special is her unique gimmick from arms, the backwards kick. She does a backflip kick, moving slightly back and reflecting any projectile kind of like Mario's cape. It also negates any physical attacks done in close range, but doesn't work on moves like Bowser's fire. Her other kick moves are used for her downward jab, neutral aerial, upward aerial, and back aerial. The rest of her neutrals are all punching attacks. She has a two button jab like in arms, pressing once is the left arm and then again throws the right arm. Her dash attack throws out the arm closest to the background and her smash attack uses the stronger version of the arm's punches. But notice I'm not specifying which arm she is using, because arms the game has a lot to choose from, and mix and matching types of arms is a vital part of the game's spirit. And so this is Min Min's gimmick. When Terry was introduced, he brought with him the idea of a back special, depending on which direction you perform the side special, he will do one of two moves. So for Smash, I'm utilising this idea along with Shulk's gimmick to make something unique. The side special allows Min Min to cycle through five different types of arms and depending on which direction you push will change whether it's the right or left arm that changes. The default arms you start with can actually be chosen from the CSS, much like which Pokemon the trainer starts with, and the five types are, in this order, the Dragon, the Megawatt, the Ram Ram, 
the Roaster, and the Tri-Blast. While each basic animation is the same, which arm you have changes the end result, and some of the stats. The Dragon stops a little into the punch and fires a long blast in a straight line. The Megawatt is slow but hits hard. The Ram Ram shoots off like Link's boomerang during the punch. The Roaster is like a regular punch but the Smash version has a fire effect. And then the Tri-Blast fires off three missiles giving it more vertical range than the others. This creates a really unique fighter that I feel captures the spirit of arms. They would have great range but would be slow to compensate with an aerial game that left a bit more to be desired, but not on the level of Little Max. That only leaves the final smash, which is a bit more standard as it's the arms rush. It functions basically the same as Donkey Kong's final smash. Whether the arm equipped affects anything here or not, I'm not sure. All I know is that for it to have an effect, you would need to be close to the opponent. So. That's the unique moveset an ARMS character could have, and the beauty is that most of this could translate over to other characters in the ARMS series. Just replace the down special with whatever that character's gimmick is, and maybe replace the kick attacks. So if Min Min isn't your character of choice, there are more options available. Before we move off the fighter to something more traditional, let's chat costumes. Min Min's ults aren't really based on anything special. Her first four, including the default, are based on her four colours in ARMS. Orange yellow, pink, and white. Then for Smash, I made up a red and blue colour scheme, a green and black colour scheme, a purple and white colour scheme, and finally, a red and silver colour scheme. So, moving on to the stage, and while Ramen Bowl would fit quite well with Min Min, while having a unique layout similar to Green Hill, I wanted to actually make the stage Sky Arena, Max Brass's home court. The stage has two layers and is on top of a skyscraper, meaning it doesn't need to be a walk-off. Occasionally floating platforms can come in from either side while the cast of arms makes cameos in the background. I don't see why you can't have all appear except Springman because he's an assist trophy and Min Min because she's the fighter. This potentially includes Headlock, who could work as a hazard. Max Brass could jump down into the arena background and aim his punches at the player to damage them. Then after a time, Headlock could jump down onto him and things change from having one punch aimed at players to six. It will make things a little bit more dynamic. They could also just go basic with the spring arena, which is basically boxing ring without the walk-offs, but that would be pretty boring. Now to my surprise, there is no arms music, which is actually criminal. Getting this soundtrack in Smash alone makes me hyped for this fighter, and while I expect everyone's theme to make it, for the sake of this video's length, let me simply highlight the top 11 I expect to hit.
Now, let's do Min Min's classic mode route, which I call At Arm's Length, which is all about the range. Many have made the joke that as new characters are added with new range, they outpace the other, so let's do that here, but as a classic mode run. Each battle is going to be a stamina battle. Jumping into round one, we have basically no range at all against Little Mac on the Boxing Ring Arena. It plays the Spring Stadium theme during this fight. Next is a battle against Zero Suit Samus on the Fountain of Dreams, while the Ribbon Ring music plays. Following that is a match against Shulk on the Garden of Hope Hazardless as the Ninja College theme plays. Following this fight up is one against both genders of Corrin on Green Hill Zone as Min Min's own theme Ramen Bowl plays in the background. Simon is up next on his home turf Dracula's Castle as the Mausoleum song plays in the back. And then round 6 is an interesting one. So we know from the Cuphead spirit that if the game recognises that you have DLC, then it sometimes uses that DLC in place of what would be there by default. If that works for me costumes, why not fighters? What I'm getting at here is that match 6 is against both genders of Byleth on the Sky Arena, as that theme plays in the background. However, if you don't have Byleth, then the match is simply against two Richter Belmonts instead, but it's still the same level, Sky Arena. Then, the final level, following the bonus game, is actually somewhat different. Much like with Terry, I chose not to have a traditional boss and instead a regular fight against a strong opponent. This time, it's a giant Captain Falcon on the Sky Arena stage as Versus Headlock plays in the back. The difference between this and the last stage, however, is that the Headlock Hazard has been activated and will only target the player, so you have to deal with that while fighting the good captain. And that is Classic Mode. Doing this will get Min Min a new fighter spirit based off of her upcoming Smash Ultimate artwork, simply titled Min Min Fighter. This is because Min Min already has her original artwork in Ultimate as a spirit, as does Springman, Ribbon Girl, Ninjara, and Twintail. These four won't get new spirits, however. Before we get to that though, me costumes, just in case they affect the spirit battles. Spoilers, they don't. Smash already has two me costumes for arms, so the most I can see it getting here is a Biff Hat, or more likely, a Headlock Helmet. The Biff Hat could go on any Mi Fighter, but the Headlock Helmet is exclusive to the Mi Brawler. Headlock doesn't get a spirit though, and neither does Biff. Every other fighter without a spirit, however, does. So let's go through their matchups in roster order, because why not? As stated, Springman, Ribbon Girl, and Ninjara are already in the game, and will have their spirit battles appear in the regular spirit board. So first up is Master Mummy, an advanced primary grab spirit. He'll be fought in Luigi's Mansion and played by a Dark Bowser who primarily uses his side special. It will also be a stamina battle. And in addition, Master Mummy will also not flinch, he'll have super armor. Defeating him gets you weight up as an effect. Min Min already has two spirits, so let's just move on to Mechanica, who is a novice support spirit. Defeating her gets you the rocket belt item. She's played by a giant blue Samus and just simply begins with a rocket belt. The stage that you'll fight her on is Wrecking Crew. Twintel already has a spirit, so let's move on to Bite and Bark, who's the other novice support spirit, and defeating him will get you electric attack up. He's played by a blue Rob, who has a smaller blue Rob that fights alongside him, on the stage Tortimer Island. You simply have to defeat the main fighter to win. Up next, we have another advanced spirit, this time being from the support variety, it's Kid Cobra, who gives you easier dodging. He's played by a male Corrin on the Kalos Pokemon League, and he has increased speed and jump. This is also a stamina battle. Next, we have the final member of the original roster. It's Helix, who is another support spirit advanced type, and getting him gets you weapon resistance up. Helix is played by a green Greninja on the Frigate Orphean stage. He prioritizes his side special and occasionally has increased stats in this stamina battle. Now, the big man himself, the legendary spirit, it's Max Brass, who is a primary attack type spirit. L much like in classic mode, he is represented by a giant Captain Falcon on the Sky Arena stage, but this time he has super armor, and at low health, all of his stats increase. Using him gives you jump down, but he comes with three support slots to make up for it. Now, onto the extra fighters, we start with Lola Pop who's also a primary spirit, but this time of the defense type and another advanced spirit. She's played by a golden peach, who occasionally gets bigger and starts with a back shield. This fight takes place on the prism tower stage. 
Next we go back to the support types for another advanced spirit, this time being Miss Sango. He's played by a blue link on the temple stage, who is accompanied by an invisible shulk. Occasionally the link will get a stat boost, and beating him unlocks a fast final smash meter for your fighter. Now our penultimate spirit is Springtron, who I decided to base basically on the same spirit battle that Springman has. He's also a primary spirit, he's also an ace spirit, however instead of being of the neutral variety, he's the attack type instead. He gives the same effect, fist attack up, and the battle is basically the same, with enemy punches and elbow strikes having increased power and increased jump power. However, this time the me brawler who represents him is made of metal, and the Springman Assist Trophy doesn't appear. And finally we get to Dr. Coil, a primary neutral type ace spirit. Dr. Coil is played by a green dark Samus, and you simply have to defeat the main fighter to win, although she'll occasionally turn invisible. She's also backed up by three Black Greninja, and the stage is Sky Arena. She gives no effect for uh, using her, but she does come with two support slots. And that does it for all the ARMS characters we could see in Smash. Of course, it doesn't necessarily have to be Min Min who becomes the fighter, it could easily be any other character like Twintail, Spring Man, Ribbon Girl, Ninjara. There's so many choices out there, and it's going to be exciting to see who makes the cut. Min Min is our choice, but let me know what your guys' choice is in the comments below. Who would you like to see? Who do you expect to see? Do you think we'll get more than one fighter, either as a hero situation or an echo fighter situation? I want to hear it all. If you want to support us, obviously share this video if you can, or go that extra step and support us on Patreon. Then you can take part in Discord, streams, you can suggest stuff for us to work on, you can give us suggestions for all content. You can do that in the comments below, and potentially we can pick them out. I mean, we've got a few lined up already, and I'm sure you're going to be excited to see them. We've got to try and get as many as we can before June, and that next fight is revealed after all. So, thanks for listening, and always remember to return to the source.